Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Cancer Zappers, where I describe the ins and outs of treating cancer with radiation. In this episode, we'll be learning briefly about MIP and ITV. Yeah, what is MIP and also what is ITV? But have no fear. Before we get into it, there are two videos you'll need to watch first. A video on countering the tumor and also a video on 4DCT. You can find links to these videos in the comments and also at the end of this video. Remember how I mentioned in a previous video that sometimes it can be challenging to target a moving tumor? How do we make sure the moving tumor is always in the radiation field and is getting the proper dose and we aren't giving too much dose to normal surrounding tissue? In one video, I suggested holding one's breath. While that works in some situations, it may not be ideal for others. In the 4DCT episode, I explained how a short movie is created showing how the patient's body, but most importantly, how the tumor moves over an entire breathing cycle. We can make use of this tumor motion if we want to target the tumor and spare normal tissue. If we know where the tumor is, that can only be useful. So this is where MIP comes in. This stands for Maximum Intensity Projection. Basically, what this means is that the highest intensity on each view throughout a 3D volume is projected onto a 2D image. It sounds complicated, but really all this does is allows us to visualize the full range of motion of a dense tumor that's surrounded by other non-dense tissue. On the CT image, dense tissue like a lung tumor appears bright and intense, and non-dense tissue like lungs and air appear dark or even black. So the full range of a lung tumor can be captured from the patient's 4D CT film. Instead of visualizing the tumor as it is at some point in time, a bigger tumor is shown that really portrays the full motion of the tumor. MIP makes it possible for the radiation oncologist to contour a margin for the tumor. This is more patient specific as every tumor moves differently. This margin is known as the ITV or the internal target volume, which takes into account tumor motion. Here, imagine my hand to be a moving tumor. If we draw the margins around the tumor to capture only one point in time, then we will effectively miss the tumor at other points in time. Hence, the usefulness of MIP, which takes into consideration the entire motion of the tumor. Compare this to using traditional predetermined margins around a tumor. These margins might be bigger than the actual range of motion of a tumor, leading to more normal tissue being treated, and that's no good. That's a reason why using MIP can be better. Just to give you a better sense of the flow, the dosimetrist is the first person to receive the image sets once the patient has been simulated, or in other words, undergone a CT scan. They are in charge of outlining normal organs of the patient and designing the radiation treatment plan for the patient. However, they rely on the radiation oncologist to counter the tumor and define margins for the tumor as those will affect how they plan the patient's treatment. Larger tumor margins may make it more difficult for the dosimetrist to spare some normal tissue. That's why the use of MIP to create ITVs can be very useful. I have a question for you. I just explained what MIP is. Can you guess what MINIP is? Answer down in the comments. MIP is a great idea, but there are also other great or even better ideas to make sure we effectively target the moving tumor. For example, gating. Stay tuned for future videos if you want to learn more.